ha, very funny mother. The Jello Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. Thank you, thank you. This is Groucho Marx. Well, here I am, stepping in over my head again. With Fibber McGee and Molly. Folks, this is just as new to me as it is to you. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. The Great Gilders League. <laughs> Well, what an original greeting. Hello and welcome to another week of comedy, funny, ha, ha. This week we are going to air the long time, the long running and very popular show called You Bet Your Life, which was a radio show and a TV show, or rather it was a radio program and a TV show. It originally aired on ABC Radio in 1947, then moved to CBS Radio in 1949, then NBC Radio in 1950, then NBC TV in 1950 also, and it ran on NBC TV for 11 years to 1961. So all in all, so in all, it was on radio and TV from 1947 to 1961. Very long run. The original host was the legendary and and famous Groucho Marx from the Marx Brothers. Today we are going to listen to the original audition episode of You Bet Your Life. This was recorded September 15th, 1947. Ladies and gentlemen, at any moment during the next 30 minutes, someone might receive $1,000 cash. At any moment during the next 30 minutes. Really? You bet your life. Here's the show that has the $1,000 bell that rings at the mention of the mystery word. And here's the star of You Bet Your Life, one of the greatest stars of all time... Jupiter. A man known to millions everywhere... Howard Hughes. Someone who's worked up from the bottom of the ladder... Oh, Margaret Truman. The one and only... Thank you, thank you. This is Groucho Marx. Well, here I am, stepping in over my head again. Folks, this is just as new to me as it is to you. I've never done one of these shows before, but we've got several couples up here on the stage, a lot of people in the seats out front, and the doors are locked, so I've got to go through with it. (laughs) Besides, somebody might win $1,000 cash at any moment. All I know is it can't be me. Jack Slatterly, who's the first couple? Well, Miss Merle McHugh and Mr. Robert Brooks meet the man with all the money, Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Folks, we advertise for a lot of people to come to the show today who are interested in getting married, but who haven't found the right mate yet. And just before we went on the air, these two volunteers were chosen from the audience. Have you two met each other before? No. Uh, No. Miss McHugh, uh, (laughs) Miss McHugh, shake hands with Mr. Brooks. How do you do? I now pronounce you man and wife. You're going a little bit too fast. Well, I guess I was a little hasty. Uh, so you two want to get married, eh? That's right. Mr. Yeah. Brooks, may I ask one question? Yes, Mr. Brooks. Why? <laughs> and Miss, nice, Miss you know. McHugh, Miss McHugh, why do you want to get married? Well, I Are you I... being evicted? No. <laughs> I think I'm about the right age. And oh, I... the right age. You like certainly are. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, before we give you a chance to make a thousand bucks, let's see how well matched you are. Who knows? Maybe Cubit Marks will light a fire here. Could be. Uh, Would you mind telling me how old you are, Miss McHugh? I'm 22. 22, huh? And uh, what is your occupation? I'm a waitress. A waitress? Yes. We should wait on me occasionally. And And, uh, how old are you? 24, Miss Marks. 24. And what is your occupation? I sell clothes. (laughs) Well, uh, wholesale? No, no, no. I see. Well, um, how tall is your ideal dream man, Miss uh, uh, McHugh? Well, uh, usually over six feet. Oh, uh, are you over six feet? Yes, I am. Six one. Six one, huh? <laughs> well, these two may get along all right, eh? Huh? Uh, Merle, uh, do you prefer the uh, polite type or the rugged caveman type? Well, 
I don't like to be dragged around by the hair, but I like somebody that's kind of polite on the surface and maybe strong once in a while. You know. I see. <laughs> what about you? How do you feel about that, huh? Well, I think she's got me right on the head there, you see. I, I, I'm rugged, but I'm still... Uh, uh, well, I mean, do you like to drag girls around by the hair? Huh? I can huh? try it sometime. Well, I guess it could be fun at that, huh? Now, tell me, do you prefer blondes or brunettes? Oh, honestly, brunettes. You, you like brunettes mm. best, huh? Sure. Is this a sudden decision, or is this something that you... <laughs> no, no, it's been going on for quite some time. It has, huh? And how do you feel about it, Merle? Well, I usually like redheads, but I can make exceptions. <laughs> oh, yeah. this, guy, this girl knows how to wait, I'll tell you that. <laughs> now, Bob, uh, what do you think? Do you think that a fella should kiss a girl on the first date? Uh, yes, definitely. <laughs> well, uh, you're pretty impartial with that decision, eh? Yes, yes, very much so. But why, you why do you feel that way, eh? Well, if you like the girl and you want to go out and have a good time and you, you, you've had a terrific evening... And you come back and you both stand on the doorstep. It's silly to say goodnight and walk away, isn't it? I mean, I'd like to get all about you in a very few days, and that wouldn't be any good. Well, you might kiss her and she might forget about you even quicker, huh? No, but not me. Not the way you kiss. Well, I don't know. I've never kissed you, so I don't know. <laughs> However, I'm not doing anything tonight, huh? <laughs> Now, uh, Merle, how do you feel about this? Do you think that a fella should kiss a girl the first time he takes her out? Or well, do you feel that's wa like walking into a candy store and swiping the stuff before you paid for it, huh? I don't, I don't know. If it's kind of surprise, spontaneous, I guess I wouldn't mind. I mean, you mean if it's combustion? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be asked. That makes it kind of uncomfortable. Oh, you just want him to grab you and, and yeah. kiss you, huh? Mm -hmm. If I liked him well enough to go out with him, I guess I wouldn't mind too much if he kissed me. I see. Night. Well, I'm not doing anything tonight mm -hmm. either. <laughs> Now, tell me, uh, uh, Bob, what do you think is the ideal size family? I mean, uh, this, this is a natural sequence from kissing. I mean, I'd just like to find out how you feel. What is, the, what is your conception three. of the... Three? Yeah, two boys and a girl. Two boys and a girl, uh -huh. huh? And uh, how do you feel about it? Uh? Well, that's funny. I, I like two boys and a girl, too. <laughs> I mean, uh, I oh, thought that was nice. <laughs> he's hooked already, I can see. <laughs> He hasn't disagreed with anything he said yet, huh? Well, you each want two boys and a girl, huh? Mm -hmm. That's six children you want, huh? <laughs> you make a pretty good partnership. Do you have any idea what you're going to do right now? No. You? No. Do you have any idea? Well, you're going to work together. In a nice way, of course. You have something in common now. You two and each of the couples here on stage have just been credited with $20 on our books. I'll ask each couple three questions. You bet me you can answer those questions using any part of the $20 you want. The idea is to build your 20 bucks into as much money as possible. Because the couple winning the most money not only gets to keep it, but also gets a chance at a $1,000 question at the end of the show. Is that clear? It certainly is. Mm -hmm. Now, how'd you like a chance at the $1,000 right this minute? Oh, Good fine. idea. Sure. Well, if you happen to mention a certain secret word, any time you're up here talking, a bell will ring like this. That doesn't mean you have to jump out of the window. That means you get a chance at the $1,000 question. Now, when the bell rings, I'll ask you the $1,000 question immediately, and if you answer it right, you collect the 1000 This is Jack Slattery off stage, where no one in the studio can hear me. If anybody mentions the word air, A-I-R, during the rest of the show, he gets a chance at the $1,000 question. Remember, the secret word is air, A-I-R. And now, back to Groucho. Married. If you were married, you would probably get 900 and she'd get 100 huh? <laughs> Now, what would you do with the 500 that you'd oh, win? Oh, I'd like to buy some clothes and maybe a couple of books and records. Mostly clothes. Though. Mostly clothes, huh? And you? I'm the saving kind. I'll save that for the honeymoon. Well, I'm well, look. pretty on the honeymoon. Well, look, uh, he sells the clothes. Are you going to buy the clothes from him? 20% discount. I see. Well, I wonder which of our couples is going to win the most money. Just to be fair, so the other couples who know how much this couple ends up with... I'd like you other contestants to uh, get off the stage. Beat it! Scram! Warden, lock them in the dressing room. Stuff a vice president in their ears. We'll bring them back one at a time. Okay, they're gone now. Now you, you two get three questions. First one is on food. How much of your $20 do you want to bet you can answer it? Ten. If you bet 10, no, you, you make 10. Five. Now, wait a minute. Decide a between you. No, no, I mean 10. Now, let's bet five and we can serve it. Just to start out, see You're going to find out now who's the boss here. <laughs> All right. I'll bet five. You're going to bet five? 
It's that way in every family. I don't know why you're all so surprised out there. All right, let me understand this. You're betting five dollars between you. Is that right? That's right. Now, uh, you can take all the time you want on this, on this answer. I'll give you five seconds. <laughs> now, here's the question. In the entire world, what food is most extensively used? Wheat, corn, rice, or pablum? You get one answer between you now, so talk it over. Wheat? What do you think? I imagine because that's used for a lot of other things, too. Yeah, wheat. But we'll say wheat. we we'll say wheat. I'm sorry. The, the answer is rice. <laughs> if you p- folks had been married, you'd have been aware of that, huh? Now, <laughs> uh, how much have they got, Jack? They got $15, Groucho. They've got $15. Uh, well, we well now, now's now yeah. your second question. It's on etiquette. Quest- this question pays two to one. How much do you want to bet of your $15? Remember, you've got to make more than the other couples in order to get a chance at the $1,000 question. Let's try ten this time. <laughs> no, no, let's go five this time. <laughs> Oh, brother, is he going to oh, save their money when they get married? The eh? We've got to get it back and double it this time. Well, all right, make it, make it, make it ten. Make it ten. <laughs> well, here it is. Is it proper to break a piece of bread or roll in the soup? Uh, no, uh, I mean, is it proper to break a piece of bread or roll in the soup? <laughs> what do you think? Is it proper or improper? I don't think so. I think it's well, improper. Uh, you think it's no, improper? No, 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 I wouldn't say it that way. I would say that it wasn't improper, but it just isn't done. Well, I mean, but That's... you've got to answer one way or the other. I mean, <laughs> you can't be a diplomat here. You've got to come right out with some kind of a specific answer. I'll say no. No, it's not proper. It's not proper. You're absolutely right. It's very improper, especially to roll in the soup. How much uh, How much have they got, Jack? They don't have $35, Groucho. $35. Now for your last chance, it's a general question. How much of your $35 do you want to bet? It pays three to one this time. So if you win, you've got $105. What's the question about? <laughs> ah, that's the thing we don't reveal, money. huh? Oh, oh. We'll make this question even more interesting. If you get it right, we'll send an Admiral radio phonograph combination to anybody you name in each of your hometowns. Mel, if you get it right, uh, who shall we send it to and where? Oh, I'd like we'll to send it to it. my mother in New York. Your mother is in New York, yes. huh? She hasn't got a radio phonograph? No, she hasn't, as no. a matter of fact. I see. She, has she got a husband? Uh, yes. <laughs> Last I heard from her, she did. Oh, she did, huh? <laughs> Is that in recent oh, years, no, she huh? still does. <laughs> and where would you like your radio phonograph combination sent? The Admiral radio phonograph. Well, I suppose my mother also in Wisconsin. Oh. Nobody's mother apparently has a phonograph, huh? <laughs> In Wisconsin, whereabouts in Wisconsin? Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Uh, well, there's a lot of beer there. I didn't know they were short on radio, so... I guess if you've got enough beer, you don't need a radio, huh? <laughs> Okay, now, how much are you betting? Let's make it 20 bucks and then clear it off. All right, let's do it. You're that. betting $20, yeah. huh? Okay, if you get it right, they get the radios. If you get it wrong, you'll probably get time bombs in the next <laughs> mail. Now, here's the question. Does mohair come from a camel, a sheep, a goat, or a toupee? A camel, a sheep, a goat, or a toupee? Yeah. Now, talk it over. Now, let's think about it. It couldn't be a camel, could it? Because that's camel's hair. <laughs> well, let's say, let's say the goat. Hmm? Do, you want, do you think so? Yeah, it must be a goat. A goat is absolutely right, Jack. Oh. What did they find out? Let me congratulate you, huh? Boy, I didn't say it, don't I? Let's introduce. They ended up with $95. Ninety-five dollars. Oh, well, congratulations oh, to you and I. Uh, a good friendship. Anyhow. You just sit down over there. We'll uh, see you all later, huh? I wonder if any of the other couples will make more than ninety-five dollars. If they don't, you two get a chance at the thousand-dollar question. Okay, boys, send in the next couple. You two sit down over there and split your winnings. If you go ahead and get married, let us know. Put the handcuffs on him, boy, so he can't get away. We got a little time left, so before I give the winning couple their thousand-dollar question, I want to give our guests who are going to be married something special, something they can use all their married life, something that costs me nothing. Jump down. Huh? <laughs> now here's a problem that I hope doesn't come up too soon with you newlyweds, but you might as well listen. It's a letter from Mrs. R. H. in Dallas, who writes, "I found a romantic letter in my husband's pocket from another woman." Should I forget about it, or should I go and visit the other woman? What do you think? Raise your hands, huh? Huh? We'll take this lady right here, huh? Take her for everything she's got. What do you think should be the answer, huh? Well... What is your name, miss? I'm Mrs. Lillian Watkins. Oh, I thought you were a miss. Uh, Miss Watkins, No, I've been married 25 years. 25 years? And how many little Watkins, huh? I haven't any. No Watkins at all? Well, you're still time. 25 years isn't too long, huh? (laughs) And uh, what is your while occupation? Life, there's hope. Yes, there is. And sometimes while there's life, there's time, huh? Eh? Uh-huh. 
Uh, what is your occupation, miss? Well, I'm a housewife, but I used to be a long-distance telephone operator. Oh, I, I bet you've given me many a wrong number in my time, huh? I suppose I have. Well, no wonder you have no children with all those wrong numbers, huh? <laughs> now, what do you think is the answer to this problem, huh? Well, I've been married 25 years, and if I found a letter in my husband's pocket today, pants, I would... Huh? I would just ignore it because good husbands are hard to find. I think you've got something there. I think even bad husbands are hard to find. <laughs> I think that's, that's a very logical solution. Thank you very much, huh? Well, the time's up. That's all the advice we can spread around right now. It's time to give our winning couple a $1,000 question. Thanks to you folks in the audience for your advice. I hope everybody made notes. Well, come back on the stage up here, Quiz Kid, because the winning couple is waiting for the $1,000 question. Where like I get on Remember, they're a snake here. <laughs> they are Miss Helen Hayden and Mr. John Bagnoli. That's the couple about to be married. They ran their $20 into $158. Are you nervous, kids, or do you always turn green this time of year? <laughs> well, tell us again, what are you going to do with the $1,000 if you win it? Now you'll have to get married, won't you, huh? <laughs> sure will. That'll be a good start. What are you going to do? What are you going to do with the money if you win it? You still going to buy the Bendix? Well, we have to get back to New York very soon because his school is in New Jersey, so I, I guess part of it will go for that. All right. Well, here's the question. If you answer it, you get $1,000 cash right now. The question is on current events. Everybody reads the newspaper and should keep abreast of the times. Let's hope you folks do. I'll give you 10 seconds. Ready? Here it is. And please don't anybody in the audience shout it out. We'll only have to give them another question. Okay. Who is the wife of the president of Argentina? Decide the answer between you Eva now. Peron. Eva Peron. Absolutely right. You have won a thousand dollars. Congratulations! You've just won a thousand dollars, and here it is. I wonder if they've revived the sponsor yet. Anyway, you deserve the money. You worked hard for it, and I know it'll be a big help to you in the future. Congratulations again, and here's wishing you a happy married life. And don't forget to invite me to your golden wedding. Huh? Oh, thank you very much. Next week, another $1,000 might be given away at any moment. And if nobody gets it next week, it'll go up to 2000 the following week. Uh, anything else, Groucho? Only that I want to sincerely thank all of you for helping me out this past half hour. I hope you liked it. I know I've had a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all of you next week when we'll be on the air again to bring... Hey, I said it, the secret word. I said air, and that was it, air. Pay me $1,000, somebody. Oh, Groucho, you can't take that money away. I know it. I was just carried away. Good night, folks. Good morning, folks. Join us next week. It's exciting, it's fun. You bet your life. The John Goodell production. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed. As always, you can listen to my podcast on all podcast services. You can also go to my website, otr.duane.media, to listen to all of my podcasts. There is donation information, patron information, and more all on the website. The website is slowly improving. Thank you for your patience. Uh, It takes a while to update and add information to the website, but it's getting there. You can also find me on Instagram, duane.otr. You can also email me if you want, info at otr.duane.media. Hope you enjoyed, and until next time, stay safe, wish you well, and as always, peace.